Hello, welcome to another class of digital design with Verilog. In this class, we will discuss about flip flop, register, and memory. Mostly, we will discuss about the register. Let us start with the class. So, outline of today's class is uh, flip flop characterization table and characteristic equations. In this uh, section, we will discuss uh, uh, RS flip flop, D flip flop, JK flip flop, T flip flop, and in particular, we will look at uh, characteristic equations or characterization table. So, in general characterization table we have already discussed in earlier classes. Today we will look at characteristic equations and then we will move towards the register and that we will look at uh, uh, particular universal registers for it support all uh, serial in, serial out, parallel in, parallel out all four combinations and after that we will look at multifunction register and memory. So, in the characteristic equations, we looked at uh, in a different way. So, given the characteristic uh, uh, table, so how you can say say the output or what should be the input, what should be the input to get a specific output. So, that we want. So, suppose you given a deep flip flop. So, deep flip flop generally store the direct data. So, given a deep flip flop, how to construct a deep flip flop. So, suppose uh, we know. So, uh, given the t flip flop input given the t flip flop input, if t flip flop input is 0 then it produces next state as uh, next state as actually whatever the earlier it stood and if it is 1 t is equal to 1 it actually toggle the states. So, if you know the characteristic table characteristic table is uh, t is equal to 0 then it is uh, earlier state if t is equal to 1 then it is actually q dex complemented one and we know so, this is actually characteristic table. So, from the characteristic table, so we will try to find out what will be the characteristic equations. Characteristic equation says about uh, so what suppose you want to get something, suppose what will be the uh, value of q plus in term of input t and present state, function of t input and the present state. Suppose you want to describe next state in term of input and the present state, what will be the scenario. So, if you can derive this equations, then you can easily construct T flip flop out of a D flip flop. So, here, so this is the characteristic table and from this we will get, if you solve using uh, kernel map, suppose this is for 0th case, this is what we are doing for 0th case, we are doing T dex q. So, for 0th case, we are getting T dex q and for 1 case, we are getting T q dex. So, if it is T is equal to 1, then we are getting complemented output and if you add both the things, the T q dex plus T dex q, this need to be given as input. So, that we will get the corresponding output of T flip flop. So, we can construct a T flip flop out of a D flip flop if you know the characteristic equation of T flip flop. So, given a D flip flop how to construct a D flip flop. Similarly, we looked at the characteristic equation of all the flip flops not only T flip flop, but uh, JK flip flop, RS flip flop and other flip flops. And what is characteristic equations? Uh, a description of next state table of a flip flop and we can constructing from the Carnot map where q t plus 1. So, here q t plus 1 is same as uh, next state whether it is same as q plus both are same, same thing we will assume similarly. Constructing from the Carnot map for q t plus 1 or q plus in the term of present state and the input. So, what we are looking at is actually q plus equal to function of what is the present state an input and the present state. So, we want to get this equations. The table that we have made so far earlier is actually characteristic table. So, what is the characteristic table of flip flops? From there we want to know what is the characteristic equations. So, again the table does not indicate a positive edge structure or negative edge structure by default we will assume it is positive edge structures. And this is the characteristic table of uh, JK flip flop, this is for JK flip flop, this is for D flip flop and this is for T flip flop. And from this characteristic table, we will try to come up with characteristic equations. 
Kerr-Sachs equations is a q t plus 1 in term of current state and the present input. So, what we will try to do? We will try to derive q plus as a function of j, k and q. So, in this case, in this case we have already derived in the earlier slides. So, q plus as a function of input t and q and for this case also we will derive similarly q plus equal to function of d and q. So, for uh, j k flip flop let us look at. So, Cassis equations as definition says. So, next state is defined in term of current state and input. So, this is the characteristics table of j k flip flop and from this, this is a characterization of j k flip flop and j k flip flop we can write q plus as a for 0 we can ignore, for this case we can ignore, for q t this is the current state, for current state we are writing j dash k dash and q, this is a j complement k complement, this one is j complement, this is k complement and this is a q, this is j dash k dash q and for this we are writing j k dash because this is 1, this is 1 we are writing j, this is for j and this is for k dash, this is for k dash, j k dash and for the last one. So, this, this one is the last one q t dex. For q t dex both j and k is equal to 1 then what a j k flip flop is j k flip flop result a complemented output. So, that thing we are writing for this things we are writing here and this is actually Karasek's equations. So, q plus equal to this function of both j and k and the present state function of j, k and q. And if you solve this, then what we will get? We will get actually q plus is equal to j q dex or k dex q. Okay, j q dex equal to k dex q plus j q dex. And it is similarly, it is a q t plus 1. This thing can be represented as q plus is same as actually q t plus 1. This is another dependence. So, q t plus 1 is equal to k dex q t plus j q dex t. Similarly, for d flip flops, so d flip flop is mostly easier one. So, this one is the easier one. So, q plus is equal to 0 if d is equal to 0 and q plus is equal to 1 if it is uh, d is in 1. So, then simply, so this is actually corresponding. So, q plus is equal to d. It do not depend upon the current state, but uh, directly whatever the value of d we input that same value get reflected as the output. So, this is for t flip flop already we have discussed in the earlier slides. So, this is a characteristic table, this is the characteristic CT of a, a t flip flop and next state can be derived. So, this is a for 0, this is for t dex and this is for t. So, this is a t dex q, t dex q and t q dex. This is the characteristic equation t dex q plus t q dex which is t x or q and same things can be written as a q q t plus 1 this is uh, next state t plus 1 in term of present state and this is the characteristics equation. Similarly, for R s flip flop also I can write and this is uh, for R s flip flop this is the table. So, we can say not table we have uh, created a current number out of table for R s if it is s r is equal to 1 1 then we do not uh, care about the s is equal to 1 and r is equal to 1 input that is why we are putting this is do not care 1 do not care one and for this we are getting a bigger 4 implicants and this is the for 2 implicant that is why we are getting. So, next state q plus is equal to for this for this we are getting both q is getting q and r is getting cancelled and what you are getting this is the r is 0 1 getting cancelled and here both 0 1 getting cancelled. So, here we are getting s and this is for this thing for this implicant this is r dex q. So, for s r flip flop also can derive very nicely and this table shows characteristic equation for all the flip flops means all means all four type flip flop t flip flop d flip flop j k flip flop and s r flip flop. So, this is for s r flip flop this is for j k flip flop this is for d flip flop and this is for t flip flop. So, whenever I say flip flop means by default it is clocked latch ok. So, latch means it do not have clock, but whenever we say flip flop by default it have clocked positive edge travel 
and let us discuss another kind of flip flop not kind uh, somehow flip flop with asynchronous input. So, we can say flip flop with support of uh, asynchronous input kind of preset or clear. So, so in earlier examples what we have seen S R D J K inputs are synchronous input. It get actually what I can say this data on this inputs are transferred to the flip flop only on the trizer edge of the clock pulse. This is the only on the trizer of the clock pulse, but sometimes flip flop have some asynchronous inputs. So, as asynchronous input affect the state of the flip flop independent of clock, independent of clocks. So, for example, the preset and clear and other way around we can say is direct set or direct reset. So, set direct and reset direct. So, when preset is equal to high, so Q immediately goes to the high that means uh, directly we are setting and when we are clear is equal to high, clear is equal to high, Q immediately clear to low. So, in general when we say set means set goes to 1 and reset means goes to 0. So, set means setting to 1, reset means setting to 0. So, whenever you say clear, clear means uh, we are setting to 0 and preset means set to high and when both are low, so when preset and clear are low then flip flop works as normal. So, flip flop in normal mode operations and this is example of asynchronous uh, inputs. Let us uh, take example of JK flip flop. So, in this there are two inputs preset and clear both are actually low activated. So, low activated means so whenever this value is low, so this is pre is low. So, pre is low means it will give uh, actually whenever pre is equal to low that means uh, internally it will send a 1 and whenever pre is equal to low then it set the value to 1. So, if you look at the things whenever this one is preset value is low. So, in this period preset value is low and whenever preset value is low, so clearly its output goes to 1. So, in this period its output set to 1 when preset value is low because this preset is uh, complemented input we are giving. Okay. So, and for clear also, so in this case for this case clear is clear bar is equal to 0 that means complemented inputs because of complement whenever this thing is 0. So, that means Q e got clear that means Q got reset to 0, Q got reset to 0 this is in this case Q got set to 1 and this is Q got reset to 0 and whenever both in this period, in this period particularly here this is the normal mode. So, both pre and clear, clear bar and pre bars, so these are actually 1. So, for this case it act as normal mode and this is actually for this regions it is doing the toggling. So, suppose j k is equal to 1. So, in this case where sub j k is equal to 1 it is supposed to struggle and it is struggling in this range. In this part it is preset that means it is set to 1. In this period it is set to 0, preset to 0. So, this is uh, asynchronous and if you look at this preset and clear they do not depend on clock. So, whenever this preset or clear signal is given immediately do the transitions. Let us look at what is the register. So, register means a group of D flip flops. So, we are what we are looking at group of D flip flop not J K R S or the group of D flip flop. So, whenever we say D flip flop means internally a D flip flop have two latches one is master and other is slip. So, flip flop is by default edge treasure positive edge treasure flip flop and it have two master slip latches. And what we are saying register is group of D flip flops synchronized and it stored data, it stored parallelly 4 data or 8 data or 32 bit data. So, in this examples in the slides whatever we are showing is it store 4 bit data. So, here so there are 4 bits data. So, you can say Q0, Q1, Q2 and Q3 it store 4 bit data and it can take input 4 input this 4 input and this is a output 4 output. So, a0, A1, A2 and A3 are output which is uh, same as actually what value stored in the register and in that some sense we can say this register is parallel input and parallel output. 
So, our parallel input to the all group of D flip flops and we are taking output. And if you look at the register, so register this is the waveform of the register and this all flip flops, D flip flops connected to the common clock. So, if you look at this is the common clock, this one is the common clock, this blue line is common clock connected to the all flip flops and this is the reset one, we can do reset at any moments we want, this is asynchronous input and this is the inputs. And if you look at, so the waveform is shown here in the left side of the slides. So, new data has to go in every new clock. So, if new data is set then every new clock it will enter. So, clearly you can see this is the rising edge, these are the rising edges and the data entered to the register at rising edge of clock because flip flop are positive edge in this case. So, exactly at rising edge the data whatever the data entered to the this is the input i 3, i 2, i 1 and i 0 and exactly at just before the rising edge of clock, just before the rising edge of clock whatever the data it is get reflected into the register. So, in this case if you look at just before this one is 0, this one is 1, this one is 0 and this is 0. So, if you look at exactly, so what it get reflected? So, this one is a, it get reflected 0, 1, 0, 0. So, whatever the exactly value just before the rising edge is got reflected, it got reflected here, it got reflected here. So, similarly, whatever the just before the rising edge of clock, it get reflected here. So, this is actually 1, then this is also 1 and this is uh, 0 and this one is 1. So, just before what were the things 1, 1, 0, 1. So, this same thing got reflected here. So, at just rising edge of clock this data got reflected into the register and this output is actually is not depend on clock. So, what was stored in Q value it get output. So, automatically it get. Similarly, for this also it have similarly. So, here just before it is 0, 0, 1 and this is 1 and the same thing get reflected here. So, 0, 0, 1 and 1. So, this same value get reflected into register or get stored into the register at just before the rising edge. That means, whatever the data available just before the rising edge it get transferred into the register. And clearly you can see inputs at the dotted will be get reflected to the output. What we are saying is just before the rising edge. That is the most important one. In register, so data get entered into the register from the input just before the rising edge. And because of that reasons, the clocked register are used in the computer system almost everywhere and that is the most important part of any sequential design. And now I am showing, so we are showing Verilog code for the register and this is a register we are declaring a modules clock and it have enable data in and data out and clock is input, enable is also input and this is a, a data in, this have a 4 bit, 4 bit inputs and this is a data output, this is a 4 bit again output. And in the what data stored, data stored in the register is actually reg. 3 0 data stored what the data that is q values ok. And for every positive edge of clock what we are doing. So, if enable is equal to 1 then data stored is equal to data in. So, whatever the data get transferred at positive edge of clock. For modeling the register we are using simple Verilog code for the register and if for all po means a positive edge. So, what we are trying to do whatever the data stored it get reflected into the data out and data out is actually output register. So, whenever every positive edge also it get reflected. This is the modeling of register we are doing here and for test bench if you want to write test bench then this is symbol earlier classes also we have discussed how to write test bench. So, here also we are writing a module register test bench and here clock is equal to initially 0 and every 5 seconds, every 5 seconds it is toggling the clock. This is behaving like clock, clock is a signal and every 5 seconds it is generating a pulse and every 
10 seconds it will generate a positive edge driver and initially what you are doing is dumping uh, files to restv.bct this uh, lines it is a, a create a dump files and this is the what variables all the variables from starting from 0 it dumped to the dump file ok. So, we can show the waveform in GTK wave if you dump the variables and this is the instantaneous instantiation of uh, the registers whatever you have designed. So, this have input clock enables this is value in input and this is value out output and what we are doing is this is value ins. So, this is this value ins are actually entered at different time. This is the code for the this is this part of the code it will be put here and this is initially value in is equal to if you look at value in initial value we have not uh, set initial value, but at time at after 5 seconds the initial value will be 3 then after that 12 after that 5 after that 14 and after that 1 and after next 5 seconds it will be finished the uh, simulations and this is the test bench code to verify the functionality of registers. You can download the code from our websites and you can run these things and check the waveforms. Now, I discuss about register with parallel loads. So, in earlier cases we have used a signal enables. So, whenever register is enabled then only data is transferring into the register. So, how we can design a register circuit with enables or control load. So, control loading the register with new data. So, this whenever LD is equal to 1 then it will actually load otherwise it will retain the older thing. This is the retaining it will retain the older thing and whenever load is equal to 1 that means, uh, whenever load is equal to 1 then only whatever they were giving inputs. So, that will be reflected in the registers. So, load is equal to 1 it will act as normal register if load is equal to 0 then it will not transfer the value, but it will return the older values. And this is left side this diagram shows this is block diagram of register with load control and these are 8 inputs and these are 8 outputs. So, this is actually 8 bit register. So, this example this uh, block diagram shows 8 bit registers and how we can design this uh, register. So, this part right side part this is for 4 bit. So, for simplicity we are uh, our, our Swiss constant we are putting 4 bit and with load control suppose uh, load is equal to in this case if load is equal to 1 then this will be that means clock will transfer clock will get because end gate because of end gate whenever load is equal to 1 then only this clock will be enabled. If load is equal to 0 means that by default this will be 0. So, if it is 0 then D will not get clock that means if D all set of D flip flop will not get the clock this set of flip flop if D is equal to the clock is 0 that means it will not get the positive edge treasure that means input will not get transferred into the flip flops and if clock is equal to positive edge treasure is there load is equal to 1 then only it get transferred. So, that means uh, what it do? So, it is actually delay the clock because of the end gate and which is not recommended. So, we are able to do the means uh, input transfer when load is equal to 1, but uh, it will simply delay the clock and we know clock is most important and all synchronized circuits clock play an important role because just before the input it transfer. So, if it little bit delay it creates lot of issues particularly synchronization issues. So, whenever say synchronizations register is used for synchronized circuit and if you delay the clock then it is actually violate the concept of synchronizations which is not good essentially it will create a huge problem. So, what the solutions solution is instead of delaying the clock let us input the clock let us input the clock directly. So, here we are inputting the clock directly to the flip flops all flip flop directly and we are recirculating the here recirculating the older data. So, this older data get recirculated and we are using a MOX multiplexers. So, whenever load is equal to 1. So, if load is equal to 1 then this get selected. So, this one this input get selected if load is equal to 1. We are not delaying clock, but 
based on the load value the MUX will select the inputs based on the load it gets selected. So, let us now discuss about the uh, shift registers. So, in shift registers so we have a particularly serial input and serial output set up a register 4 bit uh, shift register let us look at some examples this is the 4 bit registers and every clock we want a 1 bit write shift. So, in this case so 0 is get inputted and then for this uh, this value get uh, shifted 1, this value get shifted 1, this value get shifted 1, this get actually this get discarded and for input we get a new input 0. So, originally this one is uh, suppose uh, a is equal to 1001 then every clock cycle we are shifting 1 1. So, that means this clock cycle this 3 will be come to this place and this guy this one get discarded and we are getting a new 0 here. So, for next cycle for the next cycle so this this thing get shifted here and this 0 get discarded. So, this 0 get discarded and after some times you will get 0 0 0 because we are doing right shifts we are doing right shifts because whenever we are doing right shifts rightmost one will get discarded in this case and we are getting a 0 from the left sides this in the right shift we are doing this thing. So, move each bit one position right shift in 0 to the leftmost bit. So, this is the leftmost bit this is the leftmost bit and what we are doing for leftmost bit we are inputting a 0 and if it is a 4 bit register. So, whatever the content you put in the register after 4 shift it will become 0 and do your force right shift on 1001 showing the value after each shift and it will eventually reach to 0 0 0 because uh, we are giving from the left side we are giving input 0 and after 4 shift if it is 4 bit register after 4 shift definitely it will have 0 content. This is the shift register same things and how we can implement this thing. So, register content before shift write and after shift write the content get shifted the content get shifted this this things get shifted to this place and implementations connect flip flop output to the next flip flop inputs. So, this is the one flip flop. So, suppose uh, uh, D 3 D 2 D 1 and D 0 this is the 4 flip flop connect one after another and uh, assume we all things get connected to a same clock okay. and it will shift every clock it will shift. So, let us see how we can do the shift register. So, logically this is the diagram. So, 4 bit shift register. So, we have serial input this is the from the left. So, this is the for D 3, D 2, D 1 and D 0 from the left for right shift what we are doing we are giving input serial input from the leftmost and rightmost this is the serial out we are taking out the bit this is serial in serial out shift register and this is a uh, in this example we are saying the shifting is right shift. Every clock it will shift one bit to the right and clearly what is the waveform of uh, shift register. So, this is the serial in. So, in this case serial in, in this case uh, this is the at this point it will do the shifting and initially suppose uh, this is values are uh, 0 this is values are suppose 0 0 0 and 0. So, then what we are doing? So, in this case where this place it is value is 0 this place value is 1. So, this value is 1 and this value gets shifted 1 then 0 0 0 then the same thing. So, here so what were the value of input? So, this value this place this value is 1 0 and but what is the content of this register is this this place is uh, content is 1. So, that means 0 1 0 0 that, that means that means initially 0 0 then 1 0 0 0 because this is 1 because you are putting a 0 next input is 0 and 0 1 0 0 in this way it will shift the value and every clock cycle it will do a right shift considering the shift in. So, this is S i this is the serial input shift in and shift register with control suppose we want to control when to shift and when not to shift suppose 
shift 0 means retain the older values and shift control 1 means you do regular shifting. So, if shift control is equal to 1 then it do the shifting, if shift control is equal to 0 then it will not, not do the shift, but it will retain the older values. So, this is the uh, shift SR shift in. So, what value to be shifted? So, this is the what value to be shifted, this is the what value to be shifted and maybe 0 or 1 right most bit. Okay. So, if you look at the things, if shift control is equal to 0, then what will happen and shift control is equal to 1, what will happen? So, let us see in the next slide. So, with the animations, so if shift control value is equal to 0, if shift control value is equal to 0, then no change to the error because if shift control value, this is a mux, this is a mux multiplexer, this is a multiplexer and if shift control is equal to 0, then it will select data from 0 as input. That means, what about the data, this data is retaining, we are retaining the older data. So, whenever shift control value is equal to 0, that means it is selecting from the 0 as input of MOX and it is create this circuit, that means this is creating these circuits. So, it is retaining the older data, it is not taking from the shift operations, shift input, but it is retaining the older data and it is similar for other two flip flop also. And whenever shift control is equal to 1, then how the circuit is getting created? If shift control is equal to 1, if shift control is equal to 1, then it is selecting from the 1 input. Okay. That means, this is the path. So, this is input coming and this output is again coming like this. That means, serial input fading to first one, first flip flop, D3 flip flop, then output of D3 is getting into input of D2. So, this is output of D3 getting into input of D2, similar to the regular shift register implementations. With control, this circuit is getting created. That means, we are doing a right shifting, getting input from the left and every clock, it will do a right shift every clock it will do a right shift and this is the block diagram of a right shift with control, shift with control. The same thing, so this is all the things are actually put into a box kind of things. This is serial in, serial out, shift control. This is serial in, serial in, serial out, shift control and this is the parallel output if you want to take. And this is rotate, this is another thing is uh, how to rotate the things, what are the value input we are doing, so we are rotating the things. So, this value goes to this place 0 and whatever the this values right shifted one, it will come to the, this place. That means, whatever the taking out right most bit, that will be fed into the left most bit, that will be fed into the left most bit. So, we are rotating. So, shift register, if you can connect this uh, right most bit output to the input of the leftmost bit in the right shift, then it will rotate the values. So, this is a uh, transferring, this, this is what we are doing is, uh, this is right shift, this is right shift and this is with rotate. So, this thing is getting connected to the input, this is the here shift register A is rotations, this one is without rotations, B is without rotations, but A is with rotations. And what we are trying to do with shift control, so suppose uh, shift control is equal to 1 in this case. So, if shift control is 1, then, then only this clock will be activated. That means, this clock is ended. Shift control is equal to 1, then only this clock will be passed through this. And in this case, we are trying to transfer 4 bit of content of register A to the register of B and retaining the older content of register A after 4 clock. So, here, because this is the circularly we are doing shifting. So, after 4 clock cycle, it will have the original values because every rising edge of the clock, so it will transfer 1 1 bit. So, every rising edge, it will transfer 1 1 bit and after 4 rising edge, it will actually transfer to B and every after 4 cycle, the content of A will be returned to the original values. So, let us see a very interesting examples the of uh, this uh, particularly uh, 
flip flop or bit transfer how we can design a n bit ripple carry adder with only one full adder. So, you will look at the ripple carry adders. So, addition of two n bit numbers. So, this is the circuit for addition of a n bit binary numbers ok n bit two binary numbers using ripple carry adder and if you look at this is full adder a 0 b 0 and this is a c 0 is input. After finishing the means computation of a s 0 and this is c 1 this c 1 get fed it to the next full adder. That means, in ripple carry full adder ripple carry adder n bit ripple carry adder. So, this carry need to propagate from right most rightmost part to leftmost part carry need to propagate from lower bit to higher bit LSB to the MSB. And if you look at one bar carry need to propagate from lower sides or LSB to MSB that means, because it is doing serially most of the time only one flip means half full adder will be used only one full adder will be used. And if you look at n bit RCA adder delays T c into n. So, for T c is c into c out delay of a full adder and because every time only one full adder is getting used why to use n full adder. First thing is if you look at the things because carry is propagating from LSB to the MSB. So, why to use many full adders? Suppose n is 1024 or much bigger numbers. So, why to use n full adders only one full adder is active at one moment of time ok. Any moment of time if you look at only one full adder is active then why to use n full adder. So, you can manage with one full adders you can save time or and not time you can save area. So, this is the serial addition. So, we are doing addition serially we are trying to use only one full adder because anyhow in this case only one full adder is getting used at a given point of time. So, why to use and full adder? So, try to manage with only one full adders and this is serial additions we are doing using two registers A and B and this is the what operation we are performing A is equal to A plus B. A is equal to A plus B you are performing and so, A is getting again stored whatever the thing is uh, whatever output is getting fed into the A, A is equal to A plus B you are doing and every clock it is taking one bit. So, initially first clock what it will take A 0 here from it is A 0 it is from B 0 it will add A 0 B 0 and it will create carry suppose initial carry suppose you initially you carry put 0 then it will generate in the first clock in the first rising edge of the clock it will generate S 1 and C 1 and this C 1 gets stored here and the next clock cycle you use A 1 B 1 and C 1. So, in the next first clock cycle in clock cycle right first clock clock rising edge of clock you use A 0 B 0 and C 0. In the next clock rising edge of clock you use A 1 B 1 and C 1 and this C 0 and C 1 this C 1 you are getting from the full adder and this get stored into the flip flop in the next rising edge this will be used this gets stored and the next rising edge it will be used back to the full adders. So, in this way you can do serial additions we do not require n full adders with one full adder we can add n bit numbers, but it is also serial earlier thing also serial, but here it saves lot of area we do not require n full adder we can manage with only one full adders. Universal shift registers so parallel in and parallel out serial in serial out serial in parallel out if a register support all this four operations parallel in parallel out parallel in parallel means loading data into register parallelly parallel out mostly most of the register supports reading the data from the register parallelly reading serial in and serial out. So, serially you should be able to input and serially you should be able to output then serial in parallel out parallel in serial out. So, I am giving you another examples where this uh, this SIPO register serial in parallel out and parallel in serial out get used. So, we know this USB USB connections universal serial bus or SATA serial attachment. So, they are serial. So, to send 8 bit data of register to the USB through USB. So, through USB suppose you want to send some data then we require parallel input serial output because we need to give input to the USB connection serially 
So, we require 8 bit parallel register either we need to convert to serially using PISO, PI as a parallel and serial out and give to the USB. Other way around, so to receive 8 bit data to the register from USB drive, so we require a serial in parallel out because we are getting data serially, we need to collect 8 bit data and make a byte, okay, make a byte 8 bit and then send as 8 bit parallel registers, okay, receive as 8 bit registers. So, this is universal shift register, it have actually all 4 operations, so parallel in, parallel out, serial in, these are serial ins, these are the serial in and these are the serial out. And why there are 2 serial in, serial out? Because we have left shift and right shift. Because of this thing we have actually 2 serial in and 2 serial out. So, these have actually all 4 operations, parallel in, parallel out, serial in, serial out, okay. So, all combinations it support. And how to design an universal serial shift register? So, this is the design of uh, universal shift register. So, let us look at the functionality. So, it have actually means uh, two select line. So, S0 and S1 based on that we can select what kind of operations we want. And this is the there are 4 moxes are there and this is actually 4 cross 1 moxes with 2 select line. Okay. So, S0 and S1 and this operations we have 4 bit 4 D flip flops. Okay. Let us see the operations what how it do and let us uh, it do operations with this operation table. So, whenever S0 and S1 are 0, 0 then it retain the older value there is no changes and whenever 0, 1 S0 is equal to 1 and S1 is equal to 0, 0, 1 case it do the right shift, shift right. In case of 1, 0 it do the left shift and in case of 1, 1 it do the parallel load and how it is performing let us look at. So, if you look at whenever S1 is equal to 0 and S0 is equal to 0. So, S1, S0 is equal to 0, 0, there is no changes in this case. Okay. So, whenever S1 is equal to 0 and S0 is equal to 0, then it selects the 0 th input. And if you look at the path is like this, this one is the path, it retain the older values, it retain the older value, it retain the older values, it retain the older values. So, whenever both S1, S0 is equal to 0, 0, it retain the older values. It do not take input from this prior, it do not take input from outsides, it retain the older values. Okay, because whenever S1 is equal to 0, 0, it selects always input I0 for all the deep flip flops. For 1, so you can say it shift writes. So, what it is shifting writes? Okay. So, it take shift input write and it do like this because we are taking input from this. So, the circuit get created whenever S1, S0 is equal to 0, 1, it do write shift and you can see this is clearly write shifting input and this is shift out for right shift. Okay. And this is input of means output of one flip flop is getting fed into the input of another flip flop. So, Q3, Q3 is fed into the Q2. Okay. So, output of flip flop D flip flop 3 is fed into the input of D flip flop 2. So, this is second flip flop. Okay. So, this is a this output is fed into this. This is the one it do right shift. For uh, 1 0 S 1 is and S 0 is equal to 1 0 it do the left shift. You can see this is the left shift input we are giving left shift input from the right. This is we are giving left shift input from the right and this is the selecting this is because this one is S 1 S 0 is equal to 1 0 that means it will select the second one this will select the second one and the circuit get created like this this is input and this is the circuit get created. this is the circuit get created. This is the serial out and this is the serial in for the left and if you look at input is uh, left shift input we are giving to the D0, D1, D2 and D3, D3. So, we are getting output from Q3. 
and this way to get circuit get created for left side whenever S1 S0 is equal to 1 0 and for S1 S0 1 1 it is take input it is a parallel load. So, we are loading from the external world. So, in this case 1 1 it select the third input of MOX ok. So, I 3 inputs. So, in this case input get loaded into the register. So, this is parallel load by default this is parallel out ok. So, here we are able to do parallel load parallel input anyhow this thing is parallel out is available this is parallel input PPO register we can design. So, whenever S1 S0 is equal to 1 1 then we can load the input data to the registers. And Verilog code for this is actually the same thing. So, whatever earlier things we have written, this have actually two select line, select line 1 0 and left in, right in and data output and we have data input for parallel input. And how it can looked at? So, we are writing a very high level behavioral code and the whatever the earlier operation table. So, 0 0 no changes. If you look at select line 0 0. So, 2 bit 0 0 if select line are 0 0 then whatever the it return the older value whatever the earlier data it is the same data get written ok. And if it is 0 1 then we are doing right shift. So, we are taking the 3 2 1. So, here data 0 we are getting from data in or concatenating ok. And here we are doing a left shift we are getting a data from right 1. Okay. And this is 2 0 we are taking in this case 3 1 we are taking. Okay. So, in this case we are doing the right shift doing the left shift and here whole data input whatever we are giving inputs we are taking and storing into the registers. So, this is whole input is getting stored this is the parallel load. So, this is how we can uh, design a register when behavioral code kind of thing okay, with uh, case statements and for output. So, this is uh, for every positive page of clock register data get output to data underscore output. And this exactly same operation table we have written using behavioral code. And we can design multi functions registers. So, in this case earlier case uh, number of functions are 4 that is why we used uh, means, uh, 4 in means uh, 2 select line marks 4 input to 1 4 cross 1 4 functions. So, that is why we used uh, 4 cross 1 this two select line marks, but uh, if numbers of function is more then you can use uh, many other kind of marks suppose 5 functions 3 select line and 8 input. So, 8 cross 1 in this case 8 uh, 8 input 3 select line 3 cross 8 means 3 select line 8 inputs marks. Extra functions of marks need to be centered if suppose for 5 functions we require to go for higher marks for 4 functions 4 cross 1 marks is fine. But if it is more than 4 then we need to go for uh, 3 cross 8 marks or 8 cross 1 marks. So, 8 cross 1 marks means 8 input 1 output and whenever you say 3 cross 8 some conventions they use. So, this is 3 select line and 8 input this is select line and this is input. And we can design memory out of this. So, universal register one register with many functionality many register clocked with less functionality particularly not universal register, but only parallel in parallel out will look at no shift operations parallel load parallel out to a specific register multiplexer used for selections for registers and this is we will use only parallel in and parallel out not other things and we will have a select control. So, parallel in so we can see parallel in 4 bit parallel in and 4 bit parallel out and we have load control and how we can select a register. So, suppose that there are many registers how we can select a registers. So, there is a concept called tri state buffers. So, whenever this tri state buffer t input is equal to 1 then this connections a and b will be connected. And if t is equal to 0 this will be just like completely disconnected taking out from the plug pin kind of thing. So, this things are on t is equal to 0 we are taking out from the plug pin kind of it is disconnected it is get disconnected there is no connections at all. So, a register with read write control. So, if you look at the things this is a register with read write control. So, whenever the select line is equal to let us look at whenever select line is equal to 0 then both the things get deactivated because this is s is equal to 0 it reflected this line is equal to 0 this line is equal to 0. When this line is equal to 0 tri state buffer this get disconnected 
this get disconnected no connection at all ok. Then whenever s is equal to 1 and r w is equal to 1 that means this get 1 this get 0 ok s is equal to 1 and this got 0 means this got 0 and this is 0 in this case this get disconnected this get activated select is equal to 1 r w is equal to 1 means we can write it write to the register 4 bit of data. So, whatever the input 4 bit data is go to the register this T 1 get connected this is the tri state buffer T 1 get connected but T 2 got 0. So, third case so in this case s equal to 1 r w equal to 0 that means this got 0 this got 0 that means this got actually this is disconnected this is disconnected and this one is get connected that means that s is equal to 1 and r w is equal to 0 read data from the registers and register with a read write control you can club it in a box kind of things uh, how you can look like. So, this is the registers and this is a uh, select and this is the read write and this is the input and output the same thing whatever we have seen we are putting into a box format. So, that everything can be means, uh, this is vis not visible, but uh, we are putting in a box to make it more clear. So, we can design a memory with many register with read write control. So, this read write control is coming from here and it is connecting to the all registers and with select line. So, there is a decoder. So, there are 4 register are there. So, this is register 0, register 1, register 2, register 3. There are 4 register we can select this 4 register using this select signals. Now, select signals decoder based on 2 cross 4 if it is 0 0 then it will select the this register and h we are using inside the tri state buffer whenever a register is not selected this register is not selected that means if it is this register is selected means this set of signals will be zeros and it will be disconnected only this will be connected only this will be connected. So, in that way you can select the register and read or write from there based on the RW signals ok. This is the how we can design the things ok. So, what will be insights and in general with memories. So, memory with MAR and MDR. So, in this case whatever we are setting putting into the decoder this is actually MAR which register we are selecting MAR memory address register ok. So, which register we are selecting out of this 4. So, MAR value is 0 0 that means we are selecting this register ok. So, which register we are selecting this is in memory. So, we have actually memory address register address go to MAR and MAR select which register of the memory we will write and MDR it is actually is a buffer kind of memory data register or memory buffer register it store input and output. So, what about the register content suppose you are reading the things register content come and store here this is the from MDR we take the input from the memories and now we want to write to the memory write to the register 0 then data will come here and from here it will enter to the registers. This is MAR and MDR memory address register and memory data register or memory buffer registers and the same thing we are putting into box so that you can see very nicely what is inside a memory ok. So, and now the generally we memory looks like this memory have address and have data and here it will be have actually MDR and here actually MAR that is inside we are not looking and this is read write and this address select a particular register of the memory and in general. So, memory locations and word size address decide the number of memory locations memory size or MDR decides the word size and if you look at number of register is 2 plus number of location because one for M A R and another for M D R. So, 2 plus 2 into address size and one for M A R and one for M D R and number of flip flop will be M A R size M D R size plus number of locations into M D R size M D R size means what is the bit width of each registers and suppose you want to design a 1 kilobyte of memory using 2 1 kilo enabled memories. So, this is this is 4 bit memory 4 bit memory and this is also 4 bit memory you can put parallelly and you can select ok. So, so read write signal we are doing for both the memory parallelly and this address line 8 bit line we are putting for both the memories and 4 bit data we are keeping into this 4 bit we are keeping into higher bit higher nibble this is for lower nibbles whenever we are rewriting. So, 
lower side will go and write here, higher side will go and write here and whenever in the reading sides, so lower will come in from the this memory, right side memory and come into lower neighbor data and here from the higher memory side, this memories, so it will come into the higher neighbor data. So, in this way you can design 1 kilobyte of memory using 2 kilobyte to 1 kilo neighbor memories, that means we can combine parallelly and in this way you can design any kind of memories. Thank you, this finishes today class.